The Braves and the Padres kick off a four-game series this weekend. Both teams looking for consistency, but in different ways. For the Braves, how can they get the offense going? For the Padres, how do you get the winning going and get on track in a tough NL West? We'll discuss all that with Javi Reyes of Locked On Padres on today's episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. And welcome to Locked On Padres as well. It's a crossover episode. I got Javi Reyes joining me from Locked On Padres, so it's going to be a great time and a fun conversation. If you're new to either podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button on YouTube. You're listening on the audio version. Thank you so much for your support as well. Leave us a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, whether that be Locked On Braves or Locked On Padres. Looking forward to this discussion today. Love doing these crossover episodes, and Javi is just the best, so I cannot wait to talk to him about what's going on with his Padres as we get ready for this four-game set in Atlanta over the weekend. Before we do that, though, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, Javi, I want to thank you for jumping on here. I know it's been a bit of a rough week over there for your Padres. We'll get into it, but I love the chance anytime we have uh, to have you on and discuss with uh, baseball Padres specifically with you. Absolutely, man. And for those who don't know, longtime listeners, Jake was the first guest before he was part of Locked On. I bring this up literally every time we do yeah. a crossover. This was back when you weren't with Locked On, and I believe it was the beginning of the pandemic. I had you on the show to talk about Padres. And for those who need more you know, proof of Jake's brilliance, this man was early on the Jake Cronenworth hype trade. I remember that. That was one of your takeaways. <laughs> so, man, it's always a pleasure to talk, even if when it is for me lately not a pleasure to actually talk about the Padres yeah I mean it's very rare that a team you know makes a trade with the Rays and they get something good out of it but uh <laughs> but Cronenworth's been one of those and he's having a much better year I know he's been hot as yeah. of late uh for the Padres but but Javi I kind of titled this they're, they're these are two teams in my opinion that are looking for consistency but kind of in different ways the Atlanta Braves just haven't had the consistency offensively that we come to expect from them and Braves fans are still kind of waiting on that to happen. For the Padres, it's just consistency overall. Like, how do you win series against the Reds, the Diamondbacks, and the Dodgers, and then you get swept by the Rockies? Like, I don't understand this Padres team, and and I look at it, and I see a lot of talent over there, especially the past couple of years, but it's just – I look at the record, and it doesn't quite translate with what I'm seeing on paper. So – is that and that's just an outsider's perspective, but is that kind of how you see it as well? It's just a team that can't continually, consistently play good baseball. Yeah, I mean, that's been the case of the team and the AJ Preller era, I feel overall, especially these past few years, where this is just a nucleus, a core that you don't trust. You don't trust them to be able to perform, like you just said, consistently. And I think that with them, you know, I talked about this on my show uh, from two days ago or from yesterday, actually, uh, about the team where I ranted about just like when you keep having moments like this, when you keep having inexplicable. So, for example, the Padres, number one, everyone said that they, they need another bat. You know what I mean? They lost Juan Soto. You still need to try and find another bat. OK, Merrill's good, but even still, you need another bat. You might need another starting pitcher. You lost Blake Snell. They didn't just get replacements for those two. They got the best replacements. You get Luis Arise. You get Dylan Cease, who's a Cy Young contender. And then, by the way, Jerickson Profar has basically become, <laughs> albeit to a smaller degree, Juan Soto, right? That's how good he's been this year. You got the ba bounce back from Jake Cronenworth, as I had tweeted the other day. And yet, you still find ways to lose. Jake, they're even first in high leverage situations offensively this year in terms of WRC plus they, that was the number one thing they were horrible at last year was that they couldn't hit with runners in scoring position. They're one of the three worst teams um, in the last 27 years in, in terms of like clutch rating and stuff like that. And they've amended a lot of that. And yet they still find ways to lose. And I know that everyone wants to bring up Manny Machado and Xander Bogarts and Fernando Tatis jr. Especially the, the former two, but 
it's more than that. And me fundamentally, I think that it's an organizational issue. You don't just have this stuff happen year after year. You don't keep having this situation where guys underperform against one of the three worst teams since you and I have been hosting our shows in the Colorado Rockies and they get swept. And by the way, it was like insane. Game one, last three innings, you need one more run in order to come back. It happens. Sometimes you fall behind. You get eight walks from Rockies pitchers across those last three innings and you don't get one hit. Wow. Like that's in, that's insane. Machado swings on the first pitch, ground a double play. How does he follow that up? In game two, first pitch twice, Jake. He grounds into a double play on the first pitch the very next day to follow it up. And then the third game, all right, we got to salvage this. They get shut out. And Michael King, who just made history against the Los Angeles Dodgers. See, I'm already getting revved up. I can't help myself. <laughs> just made uh, history against the Dodgers going 7 2 thirds, striking out 12, a lineup that has certifiably three Hall of Famers in it already. Never mind the Tiasca Hernandez, you know, all star caliber uh, players. Does well against them, gets completely lit up by the Rockies. And it's not like it was in course. So this team, I think fundamentally, it's a reflection of the organization. And I don't think it's necessarily ownership. I think ownership is honestly, usually in sports, Jake, pretty simple. Let us spend money at the end. All right, cool. You're a good owner. That's it. That's all we ask for. And don't meddle too much in the personnel, what they do. Obviously, you can decide who to hire. But after that, it's like, you don't want to be David Tepper of the Carolina Panthers right now. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be that. Or <laughs> convincing your your staff not to take the guy who might be the second coming of God uh, in C.J. Stroud, right? So there's that. Obviously being hyperbolic on my part, but um, yeah, it's just, it's been really frustrating. The Padres offense this year has bounced back, but they're not getting it from Machado and Bogarts at all. And Tatis, while he's shown some flair, was really big in a couple comebacks this year, he hasn't found the consistency where you're showing us why you're one of the best players in the league. That hasn't happened either. So it's just been frustrating throughout, man. It's just, yeah, no, I feel that. I feel that. And hearing you talk and, you know, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a casual observer of the Padres. I do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I root for them in that NLS. They're probably my favorite team out there just because there is so much star power and there's so many, yeah. you know, exciting players on that team that make it fun to watch, but it's just, again, I, I turn it on and it's, you're losing to the Rockies or, you know, you, you, you win a couple of games and you got a, a winning record. Looks like maybe you got a chance and then you, you drop and you have a 10 week or a 10 day stretch where you go three and seven or something like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, you look at it and you look at the record and, and where they are 22 and 24, just a couple of games under 500, a plus four run differential. And again, there's still a lot of time left, but it just, it feels like a mediocre team to me mm -hmm. on, on paper. And I don't, it shouldn't be that. And I know they're in a tough division. Obviously, the Dodgers, they've already clinched the, the NL West out there, you know, with what they're doing. But uh, again, it's frustrating for me just from a fan standpoint because I feel like that team should be better. And I think it's kind of scary as a, a Braves fan because who knows what Padres team is going to show up this weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. They just got swept by the Rockies, but it's still so much talent. If they put it together and play some good games, they could easily come in and take this series from the Braves because they are that talented. And again, just to kind of speak to, to your point, I think that's what's so frustrating about this team. It's just they can be so good. They can beat teams like the Dodgers, but then they just fall back and lose to teams like the Rockies. And you, you talked about the moves that they made. You know, it's kind of a head-scratcher in the offseason. You trade Juan so Soto, which, you know, I kind of get, you know, as a rental player, want to try to get some of that value mm -hmm. back for him. But then you go out and get a Dylan Cease and you make a trade for him. And then you go out and get into Luis, Luis Arise. And it's, you know, it's kind of a confusing, are you selling? Are you buying? Mm -hmm. And again, now here we are in the season and who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of months. Are they going to be sellers or buyers of the trade deadline? We don't necessarily have to get into that, but it's just a confusing front office. Like you said, I know AJ Preller and that staff, they've done a great job of bringing in mm -hmm. talent. They've traded away all these prospects and I just feel like there's still more coming. And I feel like they've done a great job in that regards, but Again, just even looking at it from a, a front office perspective, I still it's hard to figure out kind of what this team is doing. Are they, are they selling? Are they buying? Are they in? Are they out? Uh, it's just kind of confusing. Yeah, it's 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 a lot, man. And yeah, some of your listeners might say, oh, well, everyone drops a series every now and then. Well, the Padres are two games below 500. So if they had a good record and you got swept by the Rockies, it's easier to laugh that off and be like, that's baseball. Like the Atlanta Braves literally can win a World Series and they might lose a series to the A's the very, the very first thing in the season, right? That's totally something that can happen. But with the Padres, it's like you just said, that's a perfect way to explain it, man. Just which version of the team. So while everything I've said 
sounds like, wow, they're going to get killed this weekend. They could sweep the Braves. I'm not kidding. Yeah. And then the very next week, they could get swept by the Marlins. That's the type of team I'm talking about here. Now, they've had their weirdness against the Rockies. And by the way, to address even further my point that I think it's an organizational front office issue and not maybe getting the best out of your players, maybe not having the best training staff is they've been bad against the Rockies for like three years now. This So that's not... Everyone has had a weird season. I imagine the Braves have that one weird team that for some reason they can't beat. But one of the worst teams in the entire sport, one of the worst organizations in the entire sport, you're 8-11 and 11 against them in 2021, 9-10 against them the year after. You were finally good against them last year. Congratulations. You just stunk against everybody else. And this year they're 2-5. and five. Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? So to and me, those are the teams you have to beat. If you want to make yes. the postseason, you got to win those games, you know? It's just... It's depressing, man. <laughs> it's really <laughs> depressing. And it's amazing that if I told Padres fans, Jake Cronenworth would be about as good as Freddie Freeman, if not better, to start this season. Jerks and Profar for one million bucks on one year would be a 400. He'd be third in on base percentage in Major League Baseball. If I told you Dylan Cease not only would be on the Padres, but would revert to his Cy Young type of form that he's always showed that he can be. If I told you that you Darvish was going to have a really good stretch and be healthy. If I told you that uh, Jackson Merrill would come in and immediately be a really high quality rookie at a position that they've been struggling with in center field for so long, you'd be in. If I told you Robert Suarez would be not just a good replacement for Josh Hader, but better than Josh Hader, at least thus far through the season, you'd be like, Oh, okay. Well, well, let me guess. They're not hitting with runners on base. No, they're actually the best in the league at that. Then what's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's insane. It's absolutely insane, man. Yeah, no, I get it. it. It's it's frustrating. Like I said, you look at that team and even you look at some of the stats and you think, okay, they're probably still in the race with mm -hmm. the Dodgers and the NOS, even as good as they've been. But they're seven games back. They're two games under 500. It's just, it's really hard to explain. I want to get into uh, more of this conversation. I'm going to turn things over to Javi here next and let him ask me some questions. And we'll get into the pitching matchups for the series coming up this weekend. We'll get into all of that here next i want to tell you get into supplies get supplies from the site that's made for skilled trades supplyhouse.com supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing hvac and electrical products online their easy to use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right shop a complete inventory of over two hundred thousand parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros and skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash T-M and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. All right, Javi, get back into the conversation here. I want to turn things over to you, let you ask me some questions about the Braves. Yeah, and, and thankfully give everyone a break from me for a second, you know what I mean? Uh, but when it comes to the Braves... You know, the fun part about being a Braves fan, I imagine, is that even when you have underperforming players, your team does it just find ways to lose. So congrats on that. But in terms of the individual players, I think is the the question. And I know that not everything has been great, but and I imagine you've talked about this ad nauseum. But for my listeners, Ronald Cunha Jr., um, just not having a great year so far, 100 or so WRC plus, like a little bit above that. I think he's been stealing bases, but he's been I think he got caught like four times in two games, something like that. It just yeah. doesn't seem like he's the same guy um, from last year. Do you think that last year, while he's a great player, do you think that last year's MVP nine-win season was more of an anomaly? And he's just a really, really, really good player, especially given the contract value. Uh, and you think that that's just kind of his destiny instead? Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in Ronald. I think he is. I think he's going to be an MVP type talent for a long time. But it is. It's hard to look at what he's done so far this year. And to look at the year that he had after the ACL injury. And now the year in between those two seems to be the anomaly a little mm. bit. Um, again, it's still very early 
in the season. It's hard to really pinpoint exactly what's going on this year. You know, you made – it wasn't an excuse. It was a reality. In 2022, after coming off the ACL injury, he just didn't have the trust in that knee. Mm-hmm. He didn't have the power that we were used to. And so we all kind of understood that season. It was just one where he was working his way back. And then we thought, you know, the next year after that, he's fully healthy. He's going to look like himself, what we thought he could be. And he did. An MVP type season, a 170 WRC plus, like you said, a nine – nine more type of season, just unbelievable, historic season Mm -hmm. in many ways. And coming into 2024, we believed, and again, still early, that we would see more of the same and just see that continue. But now he's kind of regressed back to that 2022 self after the ACL injury. And so you wonder, for me, I don't think it's a loss of talent. The kid is still 26 years old. I don't think he's all of a sudden just lost talent. So to me, I wonder, okay, is he tired? You know, he, he played all last year. He played in, in winter ball. He never really stopped and, you know, come in in spring training. And then he had the, the injury, this the scare with his knee in spring training that mm-hmm. cost him some time there. So is he just not fully trusting that knee again? What's going on? And look, Brian Snicker gave him a day off Wednesday. And giving players a day off is just not something that the Braves do. Their guys go out there 162 and play. But he essentially – alluded to the fact he looked down in the dugout and the kid looked tired. And that to me says something, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the fact that here we are, we're in the middle of May. It's a 26 year old and and your manager is basically saying, you know, he looks like he needs a day off. Um, I think just me personally, and I have talked about this and nauseam on the podcast for my listeners, they know this, but for me personally, I think it's a guy who has gotten off to a bit of a slow start, you know, whether it was because of the the knee injury he had in spring training that kind of delayed him. And he knows he's not performing to that MVP level. And this is a guy that wants to be the best. He, he desires to be the best and he knows he's not that right now. And so now we've got a situation where he's gotten picked off, you know, he got picked off three, three times in two games. Mm-hmm. And we got a guy who on three Oh is swinging and, and grounding into to double plays and force outs. Now we've gotten into a situation where Ronald is trying to hit a, a three-run homer. He's trying to hit a six-run homer every time he comes up to make up for mm-hmm. just a lack of play that he's had the past month, really. And we've got a guy who is pressing, and Ronald doesn't need to do that. Ronald needs to just do what he does, and he's going to have the numbers in the end. You know, the bat speed's still there. You know, the new metric and that they have on baseball savant, all that looks good. The hard hit rate is there. The strikeouts are up is the only thing that really concerns me. That was what made it so special last year. He cut his strikeout rate down a lot and it's, it's gone back up to where it was before. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that would obviously not make him a nine more player anymore. That's going to cut into what he can do. But to me at this point for Ronald, it seems like a guy that, that maybe the knee was bothering him a little bit more than he was letting on. And now you got a guy who is pressing, trying to make up for the lost time where he's had, where he's been in such a slump. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a key thing. And I think the Padres fans can relate, by the way, on the pressing thing. Um, I imagine you feel the same. I don't like it when people assume that players don't care. I think oh, that's yeah. really dumb. And I think, don't get me wrong, you and I both know there have been athletes that make it to the pros and like you can tell they don't care. But it's Anthony very, Rendon doesn't yeah. want to play baseball. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Rendon. Maybe, look, I thought that his combat, I was like, that would work if you were playing. You know what I mean? Nikola yeah, right. Jokic of the NBA can be like, yeah, I care about my kids and horses more. But he <laughs> plays every game and like plays well, so you could get away with it. But we've seen athletes. Jay Cutler in football, I think, is a famous one, right? I think that overall, though, like Padres fans can relate. Manny Machado, how does he follow it up? I mentioned in the first segment with those grounding and double play to lose the opportunity for them to win the game on Monday. Grants and double play immediately. Like, that tells me. I think he's pressing too. He sees the pressure and he's saying, I want to come back immediately. I think Tatis gets into these moments where instead of looking for walks, some singles, maybe it feels like he's trying to rip the ball into left center field. Right. So I think that's something that superstars possibly go through. It's just really wild to see it from him. And I was very shocked when he said that he might be tired. And I think that that's not something people think of when they think baseball. Um, but it absolutely yeah. can happen, whether it be mental or physical. Yeah, I, I think, think, it's I think really for important. him, I think it's more mental. Mm-hmm. He's just mentally drained. Mm-hmm. Just because of, you know, everything he, he's gone through, being the MVP, coming back, wanting to show that, you know, that's who he is. Mm-hmm. And he's not performing like that. And he's trying too much. Like you said, I mean, he wants those moments. He wants to be in those spots. He wants to get those big hits. He's not shying away from it. 
It's just he's trying to force them to happen instead of just playing his game. And when he does that, it'll just naturally happen. Mm-hmm. So it's it's actually funny, like the more we, we talk about this, the Braves and Padres, the difference is the Braves are actually a good baseball team and know what they're doing. But when it comes to the offense, Matt Olson, Michael Harris, Austin Riley, and then, of course, the aforementioned Acuna, like all of these guys, or Orlando Arcia, too, like all of these guys haven't been there except for Marcel Zuna and Travis Dardo seemingly have been, you know, really, really great. And Ozzy Albies has been solid, too. But I guess Padres fans can relate a little bit. The, a bunch of star players. I just think that one team has shown that those guys usually turn it around while the other doesn't is is a lot more inconsistent. But I'm curious to see like how that plays out this weekend, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time for this offense. Like I said, there's not a, a loss in skills for Austin Riley, Matt Olson, Ronald Acuna. Mm-hmm. You know, Michael Harris is still really young. I think he's just going to get even mm-hmm. better. It's just been unfortunate that all these guys have kind of struggled at the same time. You know, you're going to mm-hmm. have guys throughout mm-hmm. the season who have their ups and downs. But I think for Braves fans, you're hoping, okay, they're having all their, their down moments right now so that they can be ready for the second half. And to your point, as bad as the offense has been, and it's been bad. I, I ran the numbers, you know, for the last month now, it's been a bottom five offense, which you look at the talent on this team, you're like, how is that possible? Yeah. And yet they're still, you know, more than 10 games over 500. They've still found ways to win games, and they've had a really tough schedule. They've played a lot of really good teams, and they have winning rec- a winning record against teams over 500. So, you know, as bad as the offense has been, you know they're going to turn it around. You know, all mm-hmm. these guys are still really good, and when that happens – I think the team's going to take off. You know, right now people are looking at the the Dodgers, the Phillies, the Orioles, the Yankees as the top teams in baseball. The Braves have kind of been sliding back in the eyes mm-hmm. of many. But once the offense get going, gets going, and hopefully it is this weekend against the Padres, but whenever it may be, this team is going to be right back up there as, as feared as one of the best teams in baseball. Yeah, and hot take, I think it's good they're sliding under the radar. As long as the record's yeah. good, if I'm a Braves fan, right. I'm saying, look, we won a World Series not too long ago, right, in case people forgot. And we did that with some of our players hurt and we're a better team now. So just give it time. I hope everyone keeps talking about New York. Go ahead. The the Yankees are famous for not blowing into the postseason. The Dodgers, they're certainly famous for not blowing into the postseason, right? So if I'm a Braves fan, I tell them, hey, as long as the record is sharp, I think it might be a good thing to be a little bit like, like we're going to sneak up on people. But who knows? Uh, We'll see how I guess this weekend plays out. Yeah, looking forward to it. Should be a fun matchup. I want to get into more of that here next. We'll look at some of the the pitching matchups and see uh, who do we think is going to come out on top. It's a four-game series, so easy to pick a split. We'll see if me and Javi both go in that direction. We'll discuss it here next. It's a winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. In the NBA right now, the Celtics are the favorites to win it all at plus $155. Uh, the Knicks, who are in there and winning, I believe, uh, and their, uh, their matchup right now, they have tw- plus 2,700 odds. Right now in the NHL, it's the Stars who are the favorites at plus 290 with our Tom Glavins, Boston Bruins, hanging on at plus 2,700. You want to take the underdog there. And they even have a dedicated tab on FanDuel now for Paul Skeens, who pitches on Friday afternoon. So you want to get in on that action. You got to do it quickly. Last I looked, the over-under on number of strikeouts for Paul Skeens on Friday was six and a half against the Cubs. So you can check that out over on FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. Also, make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash play safe for tools and resources to help you stay in control of the way you play. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Javi, let's get into the series a little bit this weekend. Pitching matchups wise, uh, Matt Waldron versus Max Fried on Friday. You Darvish versus Bryce Elder on Saturday. <laughs> To be determined for the Padres on Saturday against Ronaldo Lopez and not sure on, on Monday either, a wraparound series playing an afternoon game on Monday. We know the Braves will throw Chris Sale. You know who's pitching in either of those two last matchups. I've heard maybe Musgrove could come off the IL. Dylan Cease probably pitches in one of those. Yeah, I think from what I've been looking at, it says Dylan Cease, so maybe that's what they're, they're going to do on Monday. Maybe give Musgrove, like, have him come back against the Reds, right? Like, have him come back against the Marlins or the Reds instead of a really tough – matchup against the Braves. I don't care how their offense has been so far. Maybe that's what they're thinking. Um, But yeah, uh, either him or Cease to probably close out this series. Uh, So you will get a lot of the Padres' best pitchers 
Um, in fact, that's the beauty of a four game series is you get to see everything. So um, I'm really excited for it. And we start off with Waldron versus old friend Max Freed, yeah. who hurts me, hurts yeah. me every time I see him. Um, just the definition, I feel like, of a consistency among starting pitchers, right? Like he's been kind of like a better version of Joe Musgrove um, in a lot of ways, if not, you know, similar at points. But, you know, they don't necessarily light up the strikeout numbers, but this guy throws complete games. He gives up, you know, not bad contact. Like he's really good. And then Matt Waldron's side for the Braves fans. Um, he's one of the more like like back and forth people among Padres fans. I think he's okay. Uh I know that the ERA says that he's got a 5.49 ERA. Um, I know he's one in five, but that doesn't matter. Um for me, you'll tell really early on if his knuckleball is gonna be on or not. That's one of his main pitches that he goes to. It's not the only thing he throws. Sometimes it's like, whoa, is it is the knuckleball back? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then other times when he pitched against the Diamondbacks from a week ago, uh, he get, gives up eight runs. So he's been a little bit inconsistent. And I would also tell Braves fans, he's been very bad the first three innings. So it's possible if you see on Friday that the Braves are up by three after the first inning, keep in mind, Waldron has, for some reason, um, so far this year, come into his own as the game goes on. So what I'm basically saying is the game isn't over yet. Um, not to mention this Padres offense that has been pretty good when it feels like it, I guess. Um, so, yeah, but I- I'm excited for all of them. So what do you think? Yeah, I'm excited about uh, Waldron to see a knuckleball. We just don't see it a lot today. Yeah. So I'm um, curious to see what that looks like for an, a Braves offense that's just struggling to really hit anything at this moment. They've struggled mm-hmm. mostly with forcing fastballs. So uh, I'm curious to see how they handle that knuckleball. And then I know you, Darvish, and Dylan Cease have obviously been very good. I don't think Darvish has given up a run since he's come back off the yeah. IL. Hopefully that that changes. And I know Dylan Cease like leads all of baseball in strikeouts over his last three starts. So that's going to be some tough matchups for the Braves. But I just said Max Freed. I mean, he had a couple of rough outings to begin the year, but he has looked like the best version of Max Freed since then. He had a complete game shutout. He's flirted with two no-hitters. He's taken a no-hitter through six innings and mm-hmm. seven innings here. Over his last, you know, three or four starts, uh, Chris Sale's looking like the old Chris Sale. Ronaldo Lopez has looked terrific. The Braves pitching has not been the problem. It's just been the offense. Their starting pitching has been great, you know, after the first couple of weeks of the season. The Bryce Elder versus Hugh Darvish matchups, one I look, that, look at that's going to be a tough one for the Braves on paper uh, with the way that Darvish has pitched. Uh, but should be some fun matchups uh, regardless. Looking forward to seeing. All of those, like you said, a four-game series, so you're gonna you're gonna you know get the best. You're gonna see pretty much everybody in this. Uh, I'll ask you about the the Padres bullpen. I know you mentioned Suarez has been locked down, but uh, the Braves bullpen. I know it's very deep. They've been very good. They should be getting Pierce Johnson back this weekend as well to help out. What does the Padres bullpen look like? The Padres bullpen is kind of fascinating because on the one hand, the talent is there more than it was last year, and I'm not only saying that because of Suarez. Daniel De Los Santos has been a nice addition for the team. He's been on a skid lately, though. Yuki Matsui, nice addition for the team, but he's been on a skid recently. The The bullpen is just, it's really weird. Outside Suarez, I think they're still trying to find their footing. They've got this Jeremiah Estrada kid, prospect. He gave up some runs the other day, but he's been really good throughout. He throws some heat, so you have to pay attention to that, especially if forcing fastball has been the Braves' um, issue. And then Adrian Monahon, who, if you've been following the Padres, he's been this kind of like failed experiment for a lot. And his stuff grades out lately as a bullpen guy. In fact, his last outing, I believe he went three innings and had four strikeouts, no hits. Like, he's been good as a reliever, but if you ask Padres fans, you can't trust the guy. Because then he has what happened in this series against the the Rockies, where he just gets absolutely tuned up. And we're like, where did this come from? Like, you'd been on a roll, and we were just starting to believe in you. Um, So overall, Padres bullpen has not been great. I can't tell what direction they're going in. I don't know if they're just having a little bit of a regression where it's like Matsui and Santos both had like sub two ERAs. Okay. Like that's probably not going to continue along. Um, Or if it's like, do they need to replace some things long-term? I'm not too worried because I like that. They actually have replacements for once guys in the minors Strata, who I just mentioned, right. They've got, they've got some options, Um, but it's just, it's a really unpredictable bullpen. I don't really know what it's going to be like, but it's definitely not bad. I wouldn't call it a bad one. Um, for the Padres pitching, it's been inconsistent with their starters with Musgrove um, and with Michael King and with Matt Waldron, but you are going to face you Darvish here. He's been awesome. I will say home run fly ball rate currently is 4.5% for you Darvish. 
his FIP, all that stuff, he's good, but it does mean, in my opinion, against a team like the Braves, this could be the like bounce back. He's due to give up some big shots at some point. 4.5% is way too low. So maybe that's what happens in this weekend. I hope not. I hope you save it for later. Please, you Darvish, please help us win. Um, but I, I would keep an eye on that. And then Dylan Cease has basically been just electric every single start, um, with the exception of his first start of the season and he a start he had against the Phillies where he still struck out eight batters. So um, that's kind of the pitching breakdown, I guess, for the Padres. But bullpen, I don't know. I need more. I need more time to think my opinion of the bullpen, honestly. Yeah, I mean, because that's a big point for the Braves. Because you know, last year they were great in the first innings; they got off to hot starts. This year, it's been in the seventh and eighth inning. They really got to a lot of teams' bullpen. So uh, that's why I kind of bring that up to see if maybe that'd be an opportunity for the Braves. Yeah, that Darvish Elder matchup. Uh, you know, Elder, I just don't trust him against good offenses, and I know the Padres have been that, so that's a scary matchup for me. But that cease potentially cease and sell matchup on Monday afternoon, I think it's going to be the game of the series. Looking forward to watching that one. Uh, should be a fun series. Javi, thanks for joining. We'll see what happens over the weekend. Uh, hopefully, we see the Braves' offense find some consistency and get going. We'll see if the Padres just find consistency overall in general. Because like I said, it's a very talented team. It's a team that I like, a team that I, I want to watch and root for. But I just they can't seem to find that consistency. And hopefully that doesn't begin this weekend. Hopefully it happens after this weekend against the Braves. But either way, looking forward to these four games in Atlanta over the weekend. That will do with this episode of a Lockdown Braves and a Lockdown Padres. Again, make sure you subscribe to both channels on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.